Hey guys, and uh, welcome to my uh, newest video. Um, I'm Dennis, and um, for for those of you who don't know me, um, I started fly fishing and tying in March 2021. So I've uh, basically just hit one year in the fly fishing world. Um, so uh, I'm uh, I'm making this video as a new uh, as the first one in a in, in a new series I'm calling uh, tying catch uh, where I'll uh, I'll be tying a fly one fly uh, and then we go fish uh, fishing only that fly so uh, it's basically what you always do um, you tie some flies you go fish uh, hopefully catch uh, some fish. Um, but uh, it's always in in different videos, making time videos, you're making videos from the water. Um, so uh, I thought it could be a, a cool idea. Um, let's see how it turns out. So um, the one fly we're going to tie today is my uh, bait fish paddle. Um, of course, we're going to fish uh, perch today. So uh, the fly we are tying is, uh, is this one in this exact color combination. We're going to tie on the NS172 Curved Gamma Rouge uh, from Eric Hooks and uh, it's in size 4. So um, we're going to use that hook and then we're going to use a tungsten bead in uh, I think it's 4 or 5 millimeters um, and then we're going to use some tan crab fur. We're going to use some yellow uh, strong fuzzy fiber and some rusty olive dubbing head uh, for the head. So uh, let's dig into it. I've mounted my uh, my uh, my hook, uh, put on my bead, mounted my uh, my thread. So um, now we're going to need some craft fur, and I'm just gonna cut it down here on the table. That's a lot easier. I know you can't see it, but it's hard to balance the the craft fur in the air just for the shots. And I'm just gonna re remove the uh, the the under fur, that's uh, under, and just straighten out the tips a little, and I'm gonna tie that in backwards, reverse, and I've made a little thread bump here, um, so it won't slide down. And I, I, I won't, um, I'm not that uh, technical uh, when it comes to, to tying. Um, I don't know anything. <laughs> uh, like, like why they are uh, acting, why the materials are acting like, like they are. And I'm not that technical. Um, if you want to know a lot of stuff about why the materials are acting like they are and something like that, go watch Gunnar Bremer. He's excellent at um, explaining why things are as they are. And then I'm going to use four strands of uh, some flash. In this color combination, it's, it's uh, this uh, golden one. Uh, looks super awesome and just gonna taper the ends a little and place it on top here uh, in the same length at, as the uh, as the craft fur but if you want to know a lot more on why and exactly how I tie this fly uh, go watch my my latest video um, I'll be explaining a lot more there, just like this. 
So I tied in my flash uh, 50-50, um, around 50-50, and um, bent it backwards. So those four strands actually went to eight. Just like that, a drop of super glue, and then I'm gonna push up my bead. I put on my bead with the, uh, a, a small, a small hole in the front, so that I could push on the bead all the way up to the materials, over the materials, uh, so it's nice and tight there. I'm just gonna move my tying thread forward. So now we are going to make a dubbing loop and I just broke my dubbing twister yesterday. I have no idea on how, but it's, it just fell apart in a twist. So um, that's not, not cool. I'm moving my tying thread forward here. I'm gonna take my, my wax. So my materials won't slip that much. And I'm gonna take this dubbing twister instead. I'm not that used to using that. I got used to my more expensive. <laughs> um, and I'm going to take a small bunch of strong fuzzy fiber here. Um, it's really not that much. Uh, I don't know whether you can see it here or it's better here. Um, but when I when I tighten it up, it's like really really thin. Um, I'm gonna cut it in quarters. So first I cut it in half, and then gonna cut it in half again here just like just like this so now i've got a bunch here i'm gonna place it in my twister in my dubbing loop here and it doesn't have to be picture perfect because we are going to cover it all up in our head almost and I have no idea how to use this dubbing twister I really can't seem to get the hold of it I'm used to uh, the modern one where I just spin it now I have to do something with this but you'll get the point if if you're using one of these you know how to do it and if you got one of those where you just spin it then you use that that one and you know how to use that but i'm a i have no clue <laughs> i just want my materials to to stick to it here whether it's pretty or not doesn't really matter here as long as they they are stuck to the tying thread and to my hook shank in a minute just like this and gonna try to place my materials to my left here so when I'm starting to wrap it around here now they are pointing backwards and we are going to uh, get all the materials better in a minute now I just need to get to the who guy here I'm gonna close it off I'm trying to push back my materials I know this wasn't pretty it wasn't pretty at all um, but 
but I have no idea how to use this. It's not a bad dubbing twist, I think. I just have no idea on how to use that when I'm used to to another one. I'm just gonna make a little nut here and <coughs> cut off the excess. And I'm gonna take my needle to get all the materials to not be tangled up like like hell. I'm gonna push the materials backwards here. Something like this. Perfect. And just gonna make a big thread bump here. Just like this. Awesome. And as I said in my, my last video, if you have seen that, you could taper the ends on the uh, strong fuzzy fiber before uh, putting it in, in the loop. But because um, as you can see now, we, we got a pretty fine cut here. Um, but you can you can taper the ends before you can cut it with a with your scissors. Um, doesn't really matter just like this and then we're going to take our titan dubbing just gonna take a small bunch I'm just trying to taper it a little it's all tangled up always and gonna cut off a small piece we won't have it to be too long. I'm just gonna place it on top here and get it all around the hook shank and as close to the hook eye as possible without covering up the hook, hook eye. And then we're going to bend it backwards just like something like like this, if you can find your, your hook eye here. Perfect. I'm just gonna pull back the materials a little so that my 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 hook eye comes forward. So I can tie this tie this off because it's basically done and gonna take my whip finish got a lot of space under here so I made a big whip finish to get a lot of thread in there and my tying thread just broke so uh, it might be the finest cut of the th tying thread I've ever made so uh, <laughs> that went fine and I'm just gonna take my materials backwards here and make it look a little more pretty just like this and that's basically the fly um, it's not that hard to tie, it, w it doesn't take that long, and all we need now is some eyes. And I'm using these eyes from uh, the fly company, I don't know whether it's better to see here. In uh, It's the flat eyes in uh, hollow silver in 5 millimeters. Just gonna place one here. On one side and gonna place one here on the other side just like that and that's basically it now I just need some uh, UV resin over the eyes 
to uh, to keep them there. And um, I'll spare you from that part. Uh, so next thing is so up is me moving to the water. Um, it's still uh, dark outside, so I'm uh, gonna wait a few few hours and uh, I'll see you on the water. Hang on. Hey guys. So now we are at the waters and um, I have uh, not actually fished that much here before. Um, I've been here some couple of times, but I've never really caught anything um, except some uh, small uh, small pikes. Um, but I almost died there. <laughs> um, I've uh, heard people talking about uh, that uh, there should be some, some fish here, um, so uh, let's just try to, to catch a perch and uh, see if it can, if it can happen. Uh, so this is the fly, now it's wet uh, and all messed up right now, but uh, let's see if uh, we can catch one. We're hooked up. <laughs> oh, shit. Okay. This pattern <laughs> has caught me my personal best. That um, I don't know how much it was. Twelve hundred grams exactly, and forty-two centimeters. And now it has caught me my smallest perch ever on the fly I think um, but it's a fish <laughs> not exactly the size that we were hoping for but um, it counts it's a fish so uh, that's awesome let's uh, get her back out there so Okay, this one is a little better actually, still not the size we were hoping for, but, uh, but uh, this one's a little better, it's not a big one, like 20 centimeters or something like that, but swallowed, look at that, perfectly, that's awesome. Let's try to uh, unhook this. Went nice and easy. That's awesome. I love how those small beasts just slam the fly. That's why um, perch is without doubt my favorite target to or favorite species to target they are so aggressive it's awesome i'm actually impressed that they are that they are biting because i just saw a pike swimming here 10 minutes ago uh, Normally, the perch ain't that active when when there's a pike swimming around, especially not in that size. But uh, it doesn't bother me. Okay, I 
don't know what's up with all these extremely small baby perch but um, wow look at this those uh, red fins here beautiful would have the perfect size for my uh, aquarium at home but um, I don't know if there's any bigger perch right here or not I mean at this time of the year they they should they should be up here almost delaying eggs and uh, do do their thing the pikes are here spawning at the moment um, so uh, so the perch should be too almost uh, I don't see any eggs in the weeds or anything yet so uh, maybe not uh, maybe they're not quite ready yet but um, let's uh, keep on fishing for uh, for a little and see if I can uh, can get some more uh, and hopefully just a, a little bigger one okay guys now I've caught like this is number 10 and uh, besides the one the first one you saw this is the second biggest of them so uh, all the others were a lot smaller than than this one so i don't actually think that i, I think that this size is just the that's just the size that's around here right now um, I know it's not the the greatest action for the video but um, I did not say I would catch a big one I was hoping for it but you'll never know but anyways I think that uh, that is it um, for now we tied a fly, got myself a challenge, had to uh, catch a fish on it, and now I've caught 10. So uh, I guess it's a, it's a success. So I guess that is it for now, uh, we tied a fly, got to the water, said I would catch a fish on it, and we did. We caught 10 perch so far on this fly, and uh, there's a lot more perch uh, coming, uh, coming this way. So. Um, that is it for now. I'm sorry uh, the fishing part <laughs> wasn't that long as uh, expected, but um, what can you do when the when the fishing is not great? You don't always win. So um, thanks for watching, and um, I hope you will uh, see my next video. Uh, please do not forget to subscribe and uh, give me a follow on Instagram uh, and a like on my Facebook page. I'll link. Uh, link uh, put links in the description and uh, again thanks for watching and uh, tight lines see you next time <laughs>